Welcome back to the fight pit, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys for joining us. It is your boys in the house. We are here to cover the UFC 304 Edwards versus Muhammad 2 card coming up this Saturday, July 27th in Manchester, England. Roll the intro music. We back. You know how we do it. Every single week, every single fight card, every UFC card, we are right here. You know where you can find us. It's your boy, Drew. Remember the flame. We got headshot dead, Gageimus Maximus, the 12 gauge headshot. And we have, there we go. Boom. Sean Ryan Sports. Sean of the Dead, Mr. Bad Beats himself. Uh, it is. Great to see you guys, as always. We are here covering UFC 304, going down in Manchester, England, Saturday, July 27th. And uh, we covered it a little bit in the prep, but if you've been following along, you know that we essentially put this card together for the UFC. We, we are the ones responsible for this card solely and exclusively. And... Uh, I think you know we're 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 gonna be due some some matchmaking fees here soon if this keeps up because we've been just a That's a cool one percent. Well, thank yeah, you. just one. Nothing crazy. Nothing. Yeah. We're not we're not trying to you know put the squeeze on them or anything. It's a it's a yeah. business you know partnership. It's a it's a relationship yeah. that we're doing. We're we're trying to help the UFC as much as they're trying to help us and. You know, we just we we've been at it for a while, making these cards for them, making their job easier, and I yep. you know I think it's high time that we we get recognized for it. Um, sweet card, sweet card, uh, top to bottom, the prelims are definitely can't miss. Um, as is the case with most pay per views, they put some good names sprinkled throughout. So uh, you're inclined to watch the entire card don't just be a casual and tune in for the co-main and main events um so we got all that and more we're going to uh rehash last weekend where i don't know if you heard but we went undefeated almost almost we were very close to going undefeated on the entire card uh i think that we we came to the conclusion that we only missed two picks on that one and uh, it was a, an upsetting edit ending to a very exciting night. Um, but all in all, we did great. If you if you tailed us, you did great. Uh, I hope that you've been sleeping well this week on that bed of money that we made you from last weekend's card. Uh, so we're going to get into that, get the breakdowns, get the predictions. But first, we're going to give a shout out to our sponsor, PillowFight.co. Now... As with, you know, your diet, your uh, your exercise, your output, taking care of yourself health wise, you also need to make sure that you're recovering properly. And the I always say uh, the best, most awesome word for recovery is sleep. Who doesn't love sleep? Um, if you are looking to get better sleep, you can hit up our friends at pillowfight.co and they got you covered. Blissfully soft, shockingly supportive. Uh, Pillow Fight's commitment to premium foams and fibers provides superior comfort all while being soft enough to cradle you to sleep as if you are fighting interim champion, uh, <clears throat> undisputed champion, Tom Aspinall uh in this weekend's card you're definitely going to need a pillow if you if you're stepping across the cage from mr aspinall especially in manchester that is not that is not going to work out for you make sure you get that pillow with you they're worth every penny invest in your rest uh they don't skimp on the details neither should you and they are obsessed with making a difference so every purchase from pillow fight allows them to donate pillows where they are needed most so Make sure you guys hit up pillowfight.co to order and for more information. Thank you guys, as always, for being the pillow of the fight pit, the, the one that just keeps everything uh, together for us. Pillow Fight has been the glue 
to our uh, to our organization thus far. So uh, make sure you guys hit those up. Thank you to Pillow Fight, and we're gonna kick off this card with. Uh, bring it up. Come on back. There we go. Shauna Bannon versus Alice Ardeline. Uh, I'm going to spearhead this one, kick us off, lead us off. Uh, Shauna Bannon versus Alice Ardeline. Short notice step in for Alice Ardeline. She is uh, quite the social media presence that you, you might have heard about this week. She's stepping in on short notice to face Shauna Bannon. Shauna Bannon is five and one. She's got two KOs, three decision wins. She's four and one in her last five, coming off of a unanimous decision loss to Bruna Brazil back in July, 2023. Alice Ardeline, like I said, short notice step in. Uh, she is nine and five with four KOs, four submissions, one decision win. She's five and zero. Oh in her last five coming off of a submission win over to Dilia Ordonez back in August of 2023. So it's been about roughly a year for both of these fighters since their, their last competition in this one. Um, this one, I'm going to keep it short and sweet. I think that Shauna Bannon is the smart choice, uh, but I wouldn't, be upset at throwing anything on Alice. Uh, I haven't looked at the odds for this fight. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a, uh, a very big discrepancy in this one or not, but I think uh, stepping in on short notice, it's a tall task, especially in the UFC. Uh, I believe Alice Ardeline was getting ready to be on the Contender Series re uh, coming up here soon. And so I don't think that she was like completely just... I don't think she's completely coming off the couch for this one, just trying to trying to step in. But she is stepping up. Uh, like I said, she's got a very she's been criticized somewhat for uh, being a uh, a social media fighter. She is uh, she's got a lot of followers. She's got a lot of influence. She has a wide audience. A lot of people know her. Uh, but she she's she fought more recently, technically, than Shauna Bannon did, um, and. Stepping in short notice, you got these these first fights on the prelims. Those ones, uh, sometimes you know people show up and uh, they're nobody because we just haven't seen them yet. So you never know. I don't I don't see this one ending in a stoppage. I'm gonna go Shauna Bannon by decision, uh, but anything could happen. Be careful with this one. Be very careful. Uh, just uh, you know. Use your best judgment. Use your best judgment. Unless you got any super inside scoops on this one, I wouldn't uh, wouldn't lay too heavy on either way. But I'm gonna go official pick Sean Bannon by decision. And moving on to the next one, we have uh, starting early with the uh, the hometown folks. We got Mick Parkin versus Lucas Brezki, and. Who Gage? Okay. Haven't that's you good. got Lucas Brezky a couple times already? Uh, two times I in a row. Like... His last two fights. Um, okay. And I thought he was gonna <laughs> actually. I thought he was gonna absolutely get plastered by Walter Walker in his last fight. Uh, but that didn't happen. He won against uh, unanimous decision against Walter uh, earlier this year. I don't think he repeats the miracle performance. I think it was more Walter just looking terrible than Lucas looking phenomenal. Nothing to take away from him, though. He did have a great fight, did what he had to do, was a better fighter in that octagon by miles. Mick Parsons, though, is on the top end of the heavyweight scale, and Lucas is roughly weighing at 237, weighing in. And Mick is at the 265 limit. Mick likes to go use his wrestling. And he's going to use that weight. And he's going to suffocate him. Both these guys go have not had anything but a decision in the UFC. So these are one of those heavyweights where, yes, it's like a finish is always possible in heavyweights. But your safest bet here is over one and a half rounds for sure. If you want to get the extra money saying... What, uh, this if the fight will go the distance if you want the extra money, and it's leaning that way. Both these how these fighters fight. I think Mix uses his weight and his wrestling and just 
holds him down, scores points, gets to the cards. 29-28 UD, Nick Parsons. Excellent. I like that. Lucas Bresky, I believe he's he opened as a 235. He was a pretty sizable underdog against uh, Walker, too. Yes. And uh, so that's not surprising. But like you said, Mick Parkin, Mick Parkin definitely no slouch. And 265, I mean, these we get one of these every card, man. It's the heavyweights that go to decisions. So uh, story of my life. Um, solid pick. Uh, kicking it off, we got uh, welterweights up next. The next fight on deck: Sam, Sam Patterson versus Kiefer Crosby. Another uh, wide discrepancy in the betting odds. Sean, I'm throwing it to you on this one. Let us know about Patterson versus Crosby. Yeah, there's not much to say when it comes to the betting odds. There, you. I would love to tell you that I found an easy plus 300 money for you, for you, but that's probably not the case here. Sam Patterson's 11, two and one, four KO, six submissions. Well, Crosby is 10, 10 and four, five KOs, two submissions. Both have pretty damn good finish rates. Um, Sam Patterson's one and one in the UFC. His last fight was almost a year ago. He got KO'd. So taking a year off is what we say is good when you get KO'd. Um, Crosby is 0-1 in the UFC. Uh, his last two losses, in uh, he lost two of his last four fights, and both of those losses were by submission, and that's where the key of my pick is coming in here. And he lost to Kevin Jusset. Um Sam Patterson has an 8-inch reach advantage, 4-inch height advantage, 100% takedown accuracy, which he's only had two takedowns. So, I mean, two takedown shots. So it's not like he's had a million. Um, and his accuracy on significant strikes is higher too. Everything, stats, whatever you want to throw at it, Sam Patterson should have this one in the bag every which way. And I'm going to go with Sam Patterson by submission. Uh, it could be a ground and pound finish also but i think he's going to get it to the ground maybe hurt him and he's going to get the rear naked choke i'm going to say sam patterson's second round submission yeah baby sam patterson second round submission uh the current odds for that one i don't know if they have the method of victory up. um sam patterson has jumped to a minus 400 at this point too so it is yeah. uh an official yeah. four to one favorite uh Excellent pick. I like it. I definitely agree. That's a uh, one of the ones I think may or may not be on my ballot for lock of the week, too, if we're yeah. including the prelims. Um, so there you go. First three out the way. We got a uh, we got a heavy favorite. And uh, I like uh, this next one. Surprising that this one I had. I, I keep double checking because I it's it's odd that this one is so far down. I feel like this one would have been yeah, would have been much higher. Um, but even it, so, it we got, get it earlier. It got bumped down twice. Did it really? Because they added. Uh, it was main card, and then got bumped to prelims two weeks ago, and then got bumped again to early prelims. Wow. That's kind of disrespectful to the flyweights right there. This is like a number one contender fight. And I see one, two, three, uh, four. I feel like this fight should be ahead of all the current prelims. I agree with that. I could, I could make the, I could understand an argument for Nathaniel Wood and Daniel Pineda. I could understand an argument for wanting Molly McCann to be higher up because uh, her and Patty Pimlet are like a duo. So if you have them like closer together, then keep the hype, keep the energy high. Oh. But uh, uh, yeah, super odd. Um, yeah. But hey, tune in, tune into the early prelims, folks. You don't want to miss this one. Uh, next up, we got number six ranked Muhammad Mokaya versus number eight ranked Manel Kopp. The uh, 
the implications for the winner of this fight is not <laughs> it's not low it's not low like like this isn't a meaningless fight at all so having this as i mean i in fairness uh they could be doing like a michael chandler justin gaethje opening up the the main card type of deal where they're trying to get people asses in seats as early as possible so um throwing this on the early prelims might kind of encourage the encourage the local fan base to get out there sooner on in the the card than just you know popping up later for the bigger name fights that's the only reason i could see this being on there because that's insane um but we got mohammed mokayev 12 and 0 two KOs, six submission wins, and four decision wins. He's 5-0 in his last five, coming off of a unanimous decision win over Alex Perez back in March. Going up against Manel Cops, 19-6, uh, and six, 11 KOs, five submission wins, three decisions. He's 4-1 and one in his last five, coming off of a unanimous decision win against Felipe Dos Santos back in September of 2023. A lot of the guys that I covered on this one are coming off of unanimous decisions, which leads me to believe that there's going to be some finishes coming out of some of these ones. But if this one is going to have a finish in it, I, uh, I would say the finish that should have the best odds would be Manel caught by KO, but it's difficult to see him KOing Mokayev. Mokayev has a style that keeps him fairly safe. I feel like the next best bet would be Mokayev by dis by uh, submission, because uh, I feel like that's what his game plan is going to be, should be, <laughs> at least. Uh, the official pick that I'm going with on this one I am going to go with Mohamed Mikhaev as much as I really don't want to. Uh, I feel like this is one of those instances where I think Manel Kopp is going to come in and <clears throat> try to put on an exciting performance, try to steal the show. And I think Mokayev is going to play it safe. I don't think he's going to try to put himself in too much danger against somebody as dangerous as Manel Kopp. Uh, I'm going to go with Mokayev. <clears throat> I'm going to go with Mokayev by submission, just to make it interesting. I'm going to go under two and a half. I think they're going to get to it pretty quick. Uh, these smaller guys, they're just like, you know, firing two angry cats at each other. They're just going to be constantly fucking clashing. Um, official pick, I'm going with Mokayev by submission. I think it goes under two and a half. I think there is going to be a finish in this one. Uh, and I... I don't, I'm definitely going to hedge a little bit on Manel Cop by KO. Uh, but I think that, I think that Mokayev gets it done in this one. The next one up, capping off the early prelims. Man, that Mokayev and Cop isn't even a prelim main event, early prelim main event. That's nuts. Um, I think it's because of the time, because they're, remember, it's seven pacific time 10 eastern time it's five hours i think it's five hours it could be six hours from eastern time over there so that's the main card doesn't start till at least 3 a.m in the morning so they might be like that's oh we point. need to get a big fight early to make sure people are in the stadium like buying right. drinks food shit like that early right that's yeah god i agree that's the only reason time, i could think main, yeah, yeah we got it uh yeah i mean we it, tom aspinall said it dana like yeah cool you want to keep the normal times for the states because that's your big market but like you could have made it like 6 p.m eastern time people would yeah. still buy it yeah mm. yeah it's yeah it's and like been... a start time or midnight start time at, in the uk but people are hell yeah people will do that on a Saturday, they're still fucking up at midnight. Yeah. Yeah, but you're asking them to actually watch the sunrise after the main event is kind of ridiculous. Yeah. That's true. I personally do my best not to ever complain about start times whenever they change up or anything like that because I am the most spoiled on the West Coast. I'm oh yeah, same time <laughs> zone. And 
every every time that they do the card they're catering it to me so anytime it's like overseas or you know somewhere where the time zone is a big uh a big gap and uh i have to wake up at like if there's like a 4 a.m start time uh because it's somewhere on the other side of the world i'm gonna do it without complaining uh and i totally understand if they would have catered this more to it, the it local. wouldn't even have been a, such a big difference too like it would have just right. been earlier in the united right. states okay cool yeah that's saturday we're, cool, let's day drink with the boys sit down and watch ufc yep What's the problem? exactly bro it's it's saturday it's saturday in the states we're not fucking doing anything else that's all abu we're dhabi waiting for PM. abu dhabi is always going to be 2 p.m eastern time like the mm. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. I'm fine with afternoon cards. Like, yeah, totally, totally. Getting it done, still be, and it doesn't. Whenever they change up the time too, then it doesn't clash with whatever else we're watching too. So we got if there's a boxing match, if there's a boxing card on, if there's uh, baseball games, if there's basketball games, if there's college football, it's changing it up. I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad. I would yeah. I would have totally understood if they would have catered this more to uh the local audiences mm -hmm. uh, but we're gonna move right along there is a uh early prelim main event on this one that we gotta check out oban elliott versus preston parsons gage is gonna give us his expertise on this one do you think that this one is uh one of the ones that they need to tune in to the early prelims for Honest opinion, full transparency, just no. Um, it's going to be another one of those cards. They both go to decision a lot. And Preston Parsons averages over seven takedowns per fight. I mean, set, takedowns attempted per fight. Sorry, let me, let me reiterate. He is, I think, at a 60% clip for takedowns. He's going to try to get it to the ground. He, Oban Elliott has definitely has the advantage standing up, not by an exuberant margin, but by a slim margin. I think he is better with the hands. Um, Pars, uh, Preston's going to use his BJJ. It's, he relies on it. He's going to try and get you on the ground, try to submit you. Elliott also has submission tools, but I don't, it really will come down to how well he defends takedowns. Because he has a zero percent takedown defense in the UFC, he's zero for he, he in his last fight his opponent was two for two on takedowns, so he can't have that against someone who's shooting in his last fight eleven takedown attempts and getting seven of them. So it, that's going to really be the big differentiator in this fight between uh, we're going to see it be on the ground for fifteen minutes and maybe see a submission, or we're going to see a mix of both stand up and ground game and we're probably gonna get a full 15 minutes of that so i have my first dog of the evening uh, i'm gonna go with oban elliott slight dog slight dog uh, i do think yeah. i preston is good on the ground he isn't the greatest at getting takedowns i think Oban knows that and has drilled it in camps. It makes his takedown defense a little better. I think he can stuff it. I think he can score on the feet. And when he does get taken down, I think he can get back up into advantageous mid-ground and get it standing again. So my safest bet here is over one and a half rounds. For sure. Uh, just like last fight, if you want to get a little extra money, fight good distance. But I have Oban Elliott split decision. And Oban Elliott is uh, open at plus 120 and is no open at plus 125. He's at plus 120 right now. And it's, it's as close to a pick as you're going to get with a little plus money on the side. Yep. That those are those are ideal. Those are beautiful. If you can get those mm -hmm. ones that are as close to being even or like a favorite, but still get some fucking plus money on it too. That is the sweet spot. Um, and yeah, if, if you, you want to just, if you want to just hedge it and just do over one and a half <laughs> two decision, those are 
very safe bets if you don't feel confident on the pick them. Add another leg to your parlay. That doesn't hurt. That doesn't hurt. The damn, they don't have them up yet. Still too early for me. Um, I have it. But I the. Have it you want to check it through? I would. Uh, the over one and a half for Obanelli, I would imagine, is probably going to be like a minus 170 or so. I only have money lines for William Hill currently. Uh, I just have the under over being two and a half rounds on Hard Rock. What's the over two and a half at right now? Minus 120 to go over two and a half. Okay, so over one and a half, it'd be like a minus 150 or so. Probably closer, probably closer to two. Yeah, two. Somewhere in there, yeah, that wouldn't be that wouldn't be a bad uh, uh, two leg if you're able to do same game parlay for UFCs. Open Elliott at plus one twenty, and then a minus two hundred. You'd still probably get a little bit of a a pick em odds on that too. I dig it. I dig it. I like what we got so far. That wraps up the early prelims. We're gonna throw it to Sean for the prelim opener. We got. Modestus Bukowskis versus Marsh Marcin Procnio. Uh, this another semi close one going up to uh light heavyweight Sean. Let us know who you got for Bukowskis and Procnio. Modestus is 15 and 6, nine KOs, two submissions, while Marcin is 17 and 7 with 11 KOs and one submission. So, another couple guys that have great finish rates. And when they lose, they also get finished too. So I do not see this one going to decision by any means. So that is my first guarantee bet in, in this fight. So I do not see this making the distance whatsoever. Um, both are 6'3". Uh, Modestus has a 4-inch reach advantage. Uh, has been KO'd four times in his, in his six losses. So that's something. Get to more in a minute. He's only 2-1 and one in UFC. He got KO'd by Victor Petrino, which is understandable. Victor Petrino has hands that are made of steel. So you get touched, you're out, even if you're winning the fight. Um, he has no takedowns. Um, and his significant strike accuracy is 44%, which is all right, pretty good, I would say. But you want it to be a little bit higher to be more effective in a point-fighting way. Um Marcin is four and five in the UFC, um, so he has more experience. Obviously, more losses. Won his last fight, he so he might have a little bit of a little bit of momentum going his way. Uh, and he has sixty two percent accuracy on a significant strike accuracy. This is not going to be a takedown fight. This is not going to be a clinch fight. This is going to be two guys standing there and swinging for defenses. Maybe some technical striking here and there but they're going to get eventually someone's going to say let's do this in phone booth and i think marcin the underdog is going to get the last laugh in this and i'm going to be picking the plus 135 marcin potentio the polish power is going to strike and uh get the knockout in hmm, i'm going to say a third round knockout I dig that. I dig that. That's uh, back-to-back unders. And if you uh, parlay those together, that's a plus 406. I dig it. Got oh, the four going on that. Yummy. Yummy stuff, dude. I'll eat that all day. I'll eat that Actually, all day. Write these I like down. that. Just to get a little, <laughs> little underdog parlay going. Good call. Yeah, I normally have mine too. I'm trying to like hype mine as I'm going to without there being too long of a pause and stuff. I'm terrible at multitasking, mm -hmm. but uh, I do dig those. Um, the right now we have uh, Gage. Did you say Parkin or Bresky? Parkin. Parkin. Okay. Parkin. High five IQ, baby. That was too long ago. And then, uh, correct. So your best bet would be going to the decision. Yeah, I got it going okay. over. For parking, being best bet over one and a half or fight to go to decision. Yep. Got that. Got that. 
And then uh, if we're going money line so far with just those six, uh, remember last week on the Lemos Jandaroba card, we missed Brian Kelleher and Amanda and Lemos, and that's it. And that was it. And we we cleaned up on that one. We killed that one. So if you are looking to throw our picks into parlays again, just going money line right now. The the six that we have. Uh, Procneo, Patterson, Parkin, Elliot, Mokayev, and Bannon. It's at a plus 21.25, so $21 on the dollar. A uh, couple underdogs on this one, not as many as we did last week. Last week was a freaking underdog buffet, I mean, bro. I felt so cash. good about Ooh. that, too. I, I genuinely felt, so, like I was saying, <clears throat> in the, the episode excuse me anytime you get that many like underdogs going to you always i think of it as like a, a a test where all the answers end up being b and you're like how the fuck did that happen like that doesn't i think i messed up somewhere but last week i genuinely felt so damn like i i was almost certain that we were going whenever i kind of felt kelleher um i mean that was like, that was the steadiest one but yeah. Plus money on Brian Kelleher and Tatum all day. Yep. You got to. You got to. That was that was definitely the sweatiest one. That was the only one I felt a little iffy about going into it. Every other one I felt so confident. I felt so confident. Um after after Hollabaugh covered, I was like, dude, we're 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 winning out. We're winning out. But hey, take the good with the bad, take the bad with the good. We had some we had some rough cards earlier this year, so it's about time that we we bounce back to our usual selves. Um, next one up, we got, I'm going to take this one, Jake Hadley and Colin Lauren. La, Lauren. Lauren. Uh, the odds on this one opened up at Jake Hadley, a plus 175. Colin Lauren, minus 210. This one, I think, I don't want to get too ahead of myself. I think this one has a performance of the night potential on it. I think it has a performance of the night potential on it. I'm not sure which, but I feel like this may this may be a, a, a runner in the game. This may be a player. Uh, Jake Hadley, <clears throat> excuse me. Jake Hadley is 10 and three. He's got three KO wins, five submission wins, two decision wins. He's two and three in his last five coming off of a unanimous decision loss to Charles Johnson back in May. Colin Lauren verse, uh, is nine and one, five KO wins, two submission wins, two decision wins, four and one in his last five. Also coming off of a unanimous decision win over Angel Pacheco back in March. So many unanimous decisions. This is one of those ones, like I was saying earlier, that I feel like uh, both of these guys are coming off of UDs. One of them a win, one of them a loss. They are uh, combined. They have double-digit finishes. Uh, we got eight finishes for Jake Hadley and seven for Colin Lauren. So I feel like these guys are going to be looking to get after it. I feel like they're going to come back in. Uh, obviously, Hadley... A uh, little bit of a chip on his shoulder. I believe he is, if I'm not mistaken, I believe he's moving up in weight for this one. I think that he is normally smaller uh, in weight class, and I think that he's think that he's going up in this one. So I understand the odds as they have him. That's a, a tall order. Nine and one uh, for Colin Lauren. He is... A pretty dominant prospect too that i feel like is i feel like the odds makers got it right on this one as much as i think that this one is going to be exciting i think that anything could happen i think going up going to go up against colin lauren he's he's a tall task he's a tall task and trying to move up and wait at a guy like that but hey we saw uh gene silva do it against drew dober and i felt like drew dober was going to take that one too so you never know you never know those odds were uh, pretty much a pick them. This one is a little bit more of a, a little bit more of a gap, a little bit more of a discrepancy in this one. Official pick. I'm going to go with Colin Lauren. I'm going to go 
I'm going to go by KO. I'm going to go under two and a half to be safe. I can't imagine that this one is favored to go to the cards, but I'm going to go under two and a half. TKO for Colin Lauren. This one, I'm going to say, I'll say first round. We'll go under two and a half just to be, just to be safe, but I'm going to go first round on that one. And next up, we got one of the fan favorites. One of the fan favorites. We got, <clears throat> excuse me, Molly McCann versus Bruna Silva Gage, the expert in the women's divisions. None better. Uh, Molly McCann, <laughs> Bruna Brazil. Molly McCann opened at a uh, minus 380. Let us know how this one's going to go down. Yeah, it's 380 for a reason. Uh, they fed her a great opponent for her style. Uh, Bruna does not have great take de- takedown defense. Uh, she's more of a striker. Molly McCann lives on the ground, lives to hunt for submissions, and that's her game. She's been doing it for a long time in the UFC for a long time, has a lot of experience, and is coming off a submission win. Bruna, uh, Bruna Brazil is coming off a loss. And I just, I think they want to see the UK fighters win. And this was a setup to get the momentum going. And like Sean said, you got to keep her and Patty together and keep the hype going. So we got to keep them close. Got to keep at least her get a win to get it started and get the UK fans going. Because um, Patty, is, it's it's a coin flip with King Green. So at least get one of them an easy run through dub. So I'm, I'm going to have Molly McCann by submission. Got some mission on that one. 100%. Beautiful. How uh, did you say? Uh, what was uh, the round? Rear, na- rear naked choke, second round. So I wouldn't go over or under on the rounds. Could be later. That's a little risky, but I do have her getting the rear naked choke. So if you want to. Just do Molly McCann money line or Molly McCann by submission. Also, great, great lines to look at. Molly McCann submission is attractive. Attractive. I like that. I like that. That's some yummy stuff on that one. I'm probably, yeah, that's probably the way I'm going to go on that one too. I really like that submission. And Bruna Silva, not, or um, Silva, Brazil, Bruna Brazil. Uh, not a, not a, by any means a, a walkthrough outing for anybody, but I think that Molly McCann is going to make it a walkthrough. Uh, not to be, not to sound like disrespectful or anything, but I, I fully agree. I think this one's going to be uh, trying to toss her a bone, trying to toss her a bone on that one, which isn't bad, which isn't bad. You know, it happens in the game. Uh, but I like that submission. That's going to be good. That brings our uh, our parlay odds to plus. 4098. So we're officially over 40 bucks for a one dollar bet on our uh our money line parlays. I like it. Uh next up. This is I believe the last one on the prelims. We got Nathaniel Wood versus Daniel Pineda. Sean is gonna let us know how this one's gonna go down. Minus 450 for Nathaniel Wood. Some long odds on this one. <clears throat> Excuse me, Sean. What do you got for us? Yeah, I'm going to go off of what Gage was just saying there with how they're building up the momentum of the English fighters going to the main card. You have Molly McCann at minus 380, and then then Nathaniel Wood, another English fighter at minus 450 back-to-back right before the main card. That's strict. That was purposeful. You know they were doing that. They do that in uh, England. They've always done that. Um, Nathaniel Wood... 26 uh 20 and 6 9 KOs 5 submissions 7 and 3 in the UFC 31 years old uh they have the same reach advantage and Daniel Panetta 28 and 15 9 KOs 19 submissions which I had to look at that a couple times so every time he has won a fight in his professional career has been a finish 100% finish rate when he wins that's and the amount of fights he has, that's unbelievable. So congrats to him. Wow. 38 years old, so veteran. Um, he's had two stints in the UFC, and he's five and six over that period of time. Um, so it's not like he really has the experience in the UFC over him. He only has one more fight than Nathaniel Wood does. 10 versus 11 fights in the UFC. He has more experience all around, but... 
this is a, this one's kind of weird because with someone that with that many finishes and he's 100 win rate by finish it's not a bad idea and how big of a dog he is to sprinkle something in there just for him to get a finish but that is not my pick by any means i think that daniel wood's going to come in there he's better every which way this goes to the ground this is standing up he is a better fighter in every aspect of the game other than finish ratio <laughs> that's it that's the only thing he doesn't do better um so when you have a fighter that's clearly better in every state of the game usually there is a finish so i'm going to say nathaniel wood is going to get the finish over daniel pineta which also gets finished a lot too in his 15 losses i think 10 of his losses have been by finish so uh, i'm going to say nathaniel wood's going to win Damn, which way does he? I'm gonna I'm gonna say TKO. It's not gonna be a clean knockout. It'll be a stoppage, uh, jumping in there. So it'll be like a ground and pound situation. Knock him down and try to finish it off. And I'm gonna give Daniel uh, Daniel some credit, and I'm gonna say he's gonna stick it out to the third round. So I think it'll be over one and a half for sure. That's Nathaniel Wood is. Nathaniel Wood is a firecracker, dude. Once he gets going, yeah. it's brutal. It's brutal. Yeah. He's got heavy hands. He reminds me of um, reminds me of guys like um, who's the the three uh, Jack Della Maddalena. One of yeah. those guys that's just a, a little doesn't necessarily look like a tank. Not built like a huge you know tank of a dude, but solid, very solid. Mm -hmm. And once. Once he starts landing, he's landing hard. He's landing yeah. heavy. Um, I dig it. And even though Nathaniel Wood currently at a minus 425, adding him to the parlay jumps it up to plus 5085. So we're at 50 <laughs> bucks so far on the dollar. Uh, I like that. I like that. I'm pretty yep. confident in these so far. Honestly, these are all pretty spot on to what I had. To what yeah. I had. No surprise at all. I dig it. Next one up, uh, opening up the main card, we got number four, Arnold Allen versus number 10, Giga Chikadze. Arnold Allen open at a minus 260, Giga Chikadze at a plus 210. Uh, Arnold Allen is 19 and three. He's got seven KO wins, four submission wins, eight decision wins. Three and two in his last five, coming off of a unanimous decision loss to Mavzar Evloev back in January. Still frustrates the crap out of me. That was such a frustrating fight. I, I'm, I, I, it's no secret. I do not like the style of guys like Mavzar Evloev. Um, and I feel like Arnold Allen had his moments in that one. I feel like if that things was, just went in. No, that was just a straight up robbery. Arnold Allen went that fight. I, yeah, I didn't want to be the one to say it, but I, I'll be that guy. I'll be that guy 100%. And it's tough because I preach so much on people overusing the word robbery that I, that one is fully justified in being a robbery. I, I, very frustrating. Very frustrating. But um, Giga Chikadze, one of my favorites still, even though he's kind of been, he's been hot and cold. He's been out. Uh, still one of my favorites. Uh, I just love his style. I love his, I love the way he approaches the game. I love his skill set too. Um, he's 15 and three. He's got nine KO wins, one submission win, five decision wins. He's four and one in his last five coming off of uh, a return unanimous decision win over Bruce Leroy, Alex Caceres. Back in August, so it's been almost a year, coming up on a year. Uh, it's always it's always a little sketchy with those long layoffs, we know. Uh, but this one, I think it's going to be uh, an exciting matchup. I think this one is uh, a candidate for fight of the night. I think that this one, if it's not a performance of the night with a finish, I think that it, it's a fight of the night candidate. Uh, these guys are not strangers to decisions, but I feel like they're both going to be looking for a finish, which is always cool. Uh, like I said, Giga Chikadze, I love his style. I love his skill set. He's got one of those traditional martial arts skill sets that is uh, adapted to uh, modern mixed martial arts very well. 
So he has, you know, I think I, there's one, he had a, a liver kick knockout, like a liver front kick, not kick knockout uh, TKO, which I just, I'm a kicks guy. I'm a kicks guy. I got to get my kicks, get my kicks in. I love it. But Arnold Allen is the juggernaut. He will not stop unless you stop him. You have to, dude is coming in there to throw down every single time. And I you got to love that. Best evidence of that, look at him when he fought Max Holloway and survived five rounds with Max Holloway. Right. Exactly. Right. He, he did get torn apart, but like he stood there with Max Holloway, who is even better than he was. <laughs> like, yeah, Max, Max told him to stand, and he stood, dude, even after taking a beating, too, which is no, like, it, it's not surprising to see happen in a Max Holloway fight, but seeing, you know, Arnold Allen being able to tough out that. And that, uh, that uh, TKO over Dan Hooker is always something that we think about, too. That was super impressive and that's that's the style that that i personally get the most pumped up for those fights are i think that this one's going to be a banger i think that this one is going to be a finish uh i'm going i can't confidently say either way i would say dribble dribble a little bit on both of them by ko probably not going to be too long odds um i think that this one has the potential to be a first minute finish. I think that's around plus 1000 or so, but this one, I got it going over the first minute. I'm going to say that this is going to be under one and a half. I'm going to say it is a TKO for Arnold Allen. I'm going to give him the, uh, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt when it comes to uh, presence. Uh, Giga Chikadze hasn't been in since August 2023. Quite a little bit of a layoff. He can absolutely get it done. He can absolutely catch him. He's got the skills. He's got the mindset. He's got the skill set. He's he's capable of getting it done. But I'm going to go with Arnold Allen by TKO under one and a half on that one. Do and you think be, the odds are correct or do you think it should be a little closer? Currently, we're looking at a minus 250 and a plus 205. So I understand it. I understand it, given that Giga Chikadze has had uh, about a year's layoff. Uh, that can that can make or break some people. You know, some people believe in ring rust. Some people don't. Mm. Some, But the ones that do believe in it, it it's evident. And uh, But I, I would understand having this. I, I definitely would have this a little bit closer. I would say maybe Arnold Allen you know, opening up as a minus 150 and swelling to a minus 200, uh, just trying to get on that. Because if on if Arnold Allen was a minus 150 in this one, I'd for sure be hammering that one. Mm -hmm. um, and so I could see him swelling to a two to one. So I it's I feel like it's justified, but okay. I, I personally, I personally I'm with you. I would have I would have started him out a little bit closer. They opened up at what was it? Uh, Minus two sixty. So there is some money coming in on Giga. I like. I totally understand that. I'm gonna. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit on Giga Chikate for a KO. Absolutely, you can't not. No matter who he's going up against. But official pick. I'm gonna go Arnold Allen. I'm gonna go TKO on that one. And his minus two fifty jumps us up. That's ten legs, and we're at plus seventy one sixty. So we have cracked the seventy dollar mark on that one. Uh, keeping it rolling. On to the next one. We got. This one, I ooh, another close odds on this one too. Christian Leroy Duncan versus Gregory Rodriguez. Duncan opening up at a minus one forty. Gregory Rodriguez at a plus one twenty. Gage, let us know how this one's gonna play out. This is gonna be a straight banger of a fight. Um, this is gonna be meet me in the middle. Let's see who drops first. Kind of fight. Um, Gregory Robocop Rodriguez is bringing in a four-fight knockout streak. And it's absolutely wild. Dating back two years, he's knocking people out in the first two rounds. Like, it's, like it's nothing. And to see him at plus odds is crazy. Absolutely wild. And... Sorry, I got sidetracked where I was going with that. 
And uh, CDL, Christian Leroy Duncan's carrying in a two-fight knockout streak as well. It's just making all the makings of a, we're going to stand and bang. And this is going to be a, under one and a half, straight fire, straight, someone's going face down on the canvas. Or we're going to see a little, little Herb Dean stoppage action. I do have Gregory Rodriguez by knockout in round one. I, I love think, it. I think... I think Gregory just Rodriguez. has a lot going into this. Has a four-fight knockout streak. Has looked great against Brad Tavares. And I just think he's both kind of disrespected at being a plus money here. He's way more experienced. Yeah, CDL is 10-2. and two, But 15-5 and five is no, no slouch. And he's been fighting for longer. So like he's just been in the facing high level of competition longer. He's looking fantastic. And if you want to grab a fight with plus money, there you go. Like grab him by knockout, grab him under one and a half. And shit. If you really want to throw it, a fight to end in the first minute. It's a good one for it. Hell yes, baby. Hell I agree yes. with you hundred percent. I was thinking this underdog a hundred percent there. 100 yeah. percent indeed indeed this mm -hmm. one is so so delicious so delicious and I really think that if Tom Aspinall football. wasn't fighting on this card this is hard fight of the night territory right here hmm. yeah performance yeah. of the night either way performance of the night either way it's it's taking home something um that one plus 120 jumps us up from a uh plus I'm going to say RoboCop is my dog of the week. Dog of the week? Yes, dude. Put that's that what I was thinking league. too. Put that out of the way. That's what right I was now. thinking too. There's only one other one that I have in contention, but that one I think is probably the front runner. Uh, front runner. We're at 11 legs right now too. We're at plus uh, plus 15,871. So we're at $158 on the dollar right now. And I love it. I love it, baby. Oh, that one is for sure leading the pack on the, the underdog parlay. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, for me at least. Uh, I like the uh, the Oban Elliott pick is a good one too. At plus 120, throwing those together. Uh, but I really like that uh, Gregory Rodriguez pick. That one I think is... If you're looking for a dog, for sure, that one is, that's the front runner for dog of the week. Absolutely. We do got a couple more though, so we'll see how it goes, but uh, we're gonna jump it up to the next one. Oh man. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it to Sean on this one because I do believe Sean is specifically the man that put this one together. Uh, we got number 15, King Green. King Green. Versus Patty the Batty Pimblet, another essential pick'em in this one. Sean, do the honors for us, sir. How's this one going down? This is a fun fight, and I think the odds are dead on right. I think this is a coin flip. You can go either way. The styles, it works great. You have Bobby Green, which is the older fighter. They're the same height, a little bit of a reach advantage to Patty Pimblet. Um, but I do think Patty's a stronger fighter. When it comes to just strength and uh, in wrestling, but Bobby Green does have his own grappling too, and he's only been submitted recently by Islam Makachev. That was before he was champion. No, that was was it Islam? Islam was his last submission lost. He uh, he got KO'd by uh. Turner oh, I'm, I'm thinking Andrew of Dalbert. deal with Shavkat. That's oh yeah um. Uh, all right. With uh, give you their records for shits and giggles, even though I don't think that's really going to mean anything. Green, you got 32 wins, 15 losses, one draw, 11 KOs, nine submissions. So he does have ground game. Patty Pimblett, 21 and three, even though it should be 21 and four. We all know which fight was rigged. Um, and uh, six KOs, nine submissions on a seven fight win streak. Shouldn't be a seven fight win streak when we say robberies. There was a robbery when it comes to <laughs> recent fights with P Patty Pimblett. 
Um, he's had two decisions in a row, so he did not. He just fought Tony, the corpse of Tony Ferguson, and didn't get a, a finish over him. While Bobby Green got a submission win over Tony Ferguson the fight prior. So I'm a huge person of saying it. I look at the last couple fights and making my decisions, and that's a big one right there. Patty Pimblett has not gone up against someone with the speed of Bobby Green. His footwork is incredible. His boxing, he will jab you to death. Every time you come near him, you're getting one, two in the face. Uh, but Patty, if he does get it to the ground and he can hold him there, kind of boring style, that's the way he's going to win this. He's not going to get a submission win. I don't see that happening. He's going to win either by decision or he's going to lose. And he could lose by decision or by getting finished. And I do believe that Bobby Green is going to finish Patty Pimblett in the third round by TKO. He's just going to basically do what he did to, to Jim Miller and like piece him up, piece him up, piece him up. And we've already seen uh, Patty Pimblett get lit up a couple times where he's wobbly on his feet. It's different when Bobby Green does it to you. King Green, sorry. Keep forgetting you changed the damn name. <laughs> King. <laughs> I'm going King Green, third round. TKO finish over Patty Pimblett and he loses in the UK. Be beautiful, sir. Exactly what I had. I got King Green by okay. He's gonna do what he does. I think, bro. I think early third round is a great KO territory <laughs> for King Green. Because unless Patty did some serious cardio work this camp, he he said it himself. He uh, tired out in the first round against Tony, who is not really Tony Ferguson. That's no the corpse. That's a that's a psyop. Um, that's not real. <laughs> it's a, deep fake, it's a right. deep fake of Tony Ferguson. <laughs> um, it's reptilian Tony Ferguson. <laughs> yeah, it's Patty didn't look like. He hasn't looked good in a while. Great. And but I will say this. If it goes to the cards, be pair, be really prepared for some wacky shit. Yeah, so yeah. I would definitely throw some money on Pat, Patty just for the factor of we've already seen one robbery. I had a 30 in the UK. If it's the- close enough they could give it to Patty somehow, they're gonna do it. And there's a history of this. Michael Bisping versus Anderson Silva. I'm sorry, I had Anderson Silva winning that, and I had him finishing the fight. Too, Michael Bisping versus go. Dan Henderson. I still stand yeah. on the hill that Dan Henderson beat him both times. Uh, and there's no, I, I, a million percent, you got to sprinkle on Patty Pimblett a split decision. Because yeah. if it's anywhere close, like you guys were saying, anywhere close, it's going to Patty. It's going to Patty. Yeah. They're not even shy about it. Even if over it's not that close. Honestly, if it, even if it's not that close. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. Uh, any sort of inkling at we've, all. And we've that, seen that, some wacky shit, too. The look at the Paulo Costa, Sean Strickland fight. That yeah. one go to scorecard. Yep. Exactly. So, yeah. The uh, official odds on the parlay were at 12 legs. We're at 29000 now. So we got $290 on the dollar if we're... we're if we're stealing away on all the money lines on that one, minus 120, King Green, <clears throat> gotta take it. Definitely sprinkle on Patty Pimblet. Patty Pimblet decision and split decision. Probably a little bit of uh, some some plus money runs on that one too. I would assume, even though they're such close odds. Uh, and I mean, Patty Pimblet at plus 100 too. Not a bad idea to sprinkle on that because it's the UK, the UK guys. Uh, the uh, moving on to the we got the final, the final countdown. We got the co-main event rematch for the interim heavyweight championship, <clears throat> undisputed. Off that, the yeah, uh, Larry, I was gonna say <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got Tom Aspinall rematch against Curtis Blades. Tom Aspinall, the interim quote unquote heavyweight champion. Versus number four, Curtis Blades. Tom Aspinall opened at a minus 390. Curtis Blades at a plus 290. Uh, I'm going to start us off on this one. We're going to hit the round robin. 
I have heard quite a few arguments from people, not the not gonna name names, not gonna throw anybody under the bus, that Curtis Blades was getting the better of the striking in their first match before the freak uh, injury to Tom Aspinall. I think that people are severely grasping at straws on that one. I think that Curtis Blades, his striking is not bad. I'm not saying that he has bad striking. He put out uh, Almeida in his last one. He's put out dudes before. If he catches you, he does have the power to put you out. I think that Tom Aspinall was compromised in that one. I think that he went in there looking to try to get a uh, looking to try to get a quick finish, and it just it it didn't work out for him. I think uh, Curtis Blades has more of a uh, <clears throat> like I said earlier a juggernaut style. Once he gets going in one direction, very difficult to stop. He does not have the kind of uh, movement that Tom Aspinall does at heavyweight. Tom Aspinall is spry. He has fantastic footwork. He has fantastic hands. He's got great wrestling. So we know that if Curtis Blades is going to look to try to dominate him on the ground, that Tom Aspinall can hold his own. Uh, he's got that old catch wrestling style, catch as catch can. Uh, just beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff. If you guys have never, if you've never watched catch as catch can wrestling, highly recommend it. It's a very difficult, uh, very OG style to to rock with. And he does it beautifully, and he's got fantastic boxing. Fantastic boxing. This one, I'm going to kick us off with Tom Aspinall. I don't think it's too, uh, too crazy to think that he's going to get a KO inside the first two rounds. If somehow Curtis Blades is able to get a hold of him, and uh, uh, keep them keep the top position for a su substantial amount of time. I could see it happening after they stand them back up for the second round, but I'm gonna kick it off with Tom Aspinall by KO in the first round. I think that that's something that you have to put a little bit down on in any Tom Aspinall fight. Uh, Tom Aspinall by first round. Let's go uh, clockwise to start it off. Gage, let us know. How we doing on this one, Aspinall and Blades? Keep this one short and damn sweet, just like this fight's going to be. Uh, Tom Aspinall by absolute obliteration. Hard to find on the <laughs> card, hard to find on the betting app, but if you look hard enough, you can find it there. Just look for the, like, the Exodia symbol next to it. That's how you know it's by obl obliteration. <laughs> yeah, oh, some Yu-Gi-Oh references here. <laughs> oh, we man. we do we do anime, folks. We do anime. You got to be prepared for that. Okay, if you haven't been doing your homework, you better start because there will be anime references. Um, I just started One Piece, so start just God started. Speed, brother. God there you speed. go. Yeah. There you go. There you go. I'm caught up, but good. <laughs> Soldier. We're about 45 episodes and only need a thousand more. Uh, that's <laughs> awesome. Uh, Tom Aspinall currently at a minus 370. So the the Open has a uh, 390. They've been dropping a little bit on Curtis Blades. Uh, honestly, I think his only hope is for another injury. Uh, Sean, let us know how we're capping it. All right. Curtis Blades is finally getting the belt, and Tom Aspinall's blowing out the other knee. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I had to say that just for Kyle because Kyle would have taken a stroke because he's probably the biggest Tom Aspinall lover there is. Yeah, uh, so, you know, I had to say that. So if he watches this, he's going to want to strangle me. No, but that's awesome. <laughs> Tom Aspinall should win this any which way. You can't sleep on Curtis Blade's power because he has knocked out multiple people and his grappling is very good. But Tom Aspinall's grappling, we just haven't seen, but he is very, very good on the ground. Anyone that trains with him or you hear from talks about how elite he is on the ground game too, which I would really like to see this fight go to the ground just to show how complete of a fighter Tom Aspinall is. Uh, I would love to see it. And I'm. this is just one of these weird ones i'm going to say i think it's going to be tom aspinall by submission rear naked choke i think he's going to hurt him and he's going to get the submission and just show off that he's just more well-rounded than anyone in the heavyweight division including john jones
<laughs> I like that. I like that. I I wouldn't wouldn't be surprised one bit. I do think yeah. that Curtis Blades is going to look to get it to the ground, and I think that once mm-hmm. he gets it to the ground, I feel like he's not going to have the time that he was expecting. Um, but that's uh, pretty much how I thought we were going with the boys. We got a yeah. unanimous unanimous for Tom Aspinall and still undisputed heavyweight champion tom aspinall the main event in this one though might not be so easy we have the rematch between champion leon edwards and number two ranked Bilal muhammad Uh, i'm gonna take it counterclockwise on this one i'll start it off again this one uh i did a video on too that i'm i'm where i explain my reasoning for it this one i think it is so widely believed that this one is going to go to a decision uh i think that anytime that there's a an mma narrative that is so widely believed like that i think some crazy shit happens and especially in welterweight lately i think that the narratives on that one have gone so bonkers uh like Kamaru Usman versus Leon Edwards, for example. First one, we thought Usman was going to have the decision win. Edwards gets a head kick knockout. The rematch, we thought that, you know, Usman was winning all the way up until the head kick. So if uh, if Edwards wasn't able to put him out again, it was going to be another decision for Usman. And Edwards won the decision. Uh, I feel like the narrative is very solid as far as this fight going the distance and leon edwards getting a decision i think that there's going to be a finish in this one i think both of these guys are going to be the ones that screw up the parlays i think i I think it's going to get all the way to the end and i think everybody's going to have this one go into a decision and there's going to be some kind of fucking finish there's going to be some kind of finish leon edwards is going to catch a fucking uh finger in the eye and it's going to be a no contest a I think something's going to happen. I don't see this one going to a decision. I'm going to go with Leon Edwards on this one, but I am not counting on it going to the cards. I will throw that on, you know, some some favorites parlays. Um, but for some reason, I just, I think that this one, everybody thinks that it's going to a decision. I think that we all are collectively agreed that it's going to a decision. And I feel like that's going to be the one that fucks up a parlay or two. So I'm gonna go Leon Edwards by. I'm gonna go Leon Edwards by third round TKO. Just to just to get us kicked off with some some bonkers shit. Um, and then uh, Sean, I'm throwing it to you next, sir. Uh, let us know who you got. Yeah, if you watched the first fight between them, Leon dominated the first round all the way through. Yes, it was on short notice for Bilal Muhammad, but like him, he he trains all the time. He's never not training. There's certain fighters that they take off seasons. Bilal Muhammad's not one of them, so it's not like he was out of shape for fight by any means. He was in great shape. Um, obviously, the second round, Bilal was putting the pressure on him more, and then the eye poke happened, and it was sucks, but um leon's team doing what they did when try to make it a narrative that oh he's just trying to get out of there that's that's stupid that uh, that fucking finger went all the way to his brain that's that's just stupid um i'm kind of leaning your way but then when i look at their finish rates and i look at below muhammad has six finishes and 26 fights i'm like god damn it dude like <laughs> even when he loses he only has one time he got knocked out but the other two times was by decision he lost and i'm like i want to i really want to say the main event's going to be a finish but i i think i have to go decision here leon edwards decision he'll just win it four rounds to one i think yeah i think below muhammad's wrestling may get him one but at the same point you look at who leon just went up against he kamaru uzman twice and colby covington better wrestlers than below muhammad so and also yeah. bigger much and bigger yeah. kobe maybe not kobe's a little on the smaller side but kamaru usman definitely kamaru's a big strong and he okay the first the first fight was like the best version of kamaru usman that you were gonna yeah. get 
Yeah. Yep. And uh, that's why I'm going to say Leon 49, 46, somehow Bilal will get around. That's about it. And I could see this fight being kind of weird because if you look at the eye pokes and Leon has it religiously, you have the fence grabs and shit like that. Both of them have been caught doing it quite often. This could be a weird fight, a weird main event. Yep. So yep. don't be surprised if people are upset after this main event. So Leon yeah, I, Edwards. I, I think I might go with the first fight pit no contest as a decision here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this isn't a bad one to do it on. I do, bro. Uh, I'm telling you, this one no. stuff is fucking gonna go bonkers on this yeah. one. I do think something weird's gonna happen. I really yep. do. And like, Bilal's trying to hype up his training with Khabib that he did this off this training camp too. And I think he's gonna really lean on the wrestling and think who he is because he was in Dagestan training. And he's going to catch a knee up the middle and absolutely eat the octagon floor. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to catch a knee up the middle because Leon's very good with his feints. Very good baiting reactions out of people. And if he sees Bilal try to desperation shoot, he's going to throw a kick or a knee straight up the middle and Bilal's going to eat it to the chin and to the nose. I'm going to go Leon Edwards. Second round knockout. God, I hope you're right. <laughs> I hope you're right. <laughs> I just, I'm man. It's my par, been... my parlay is just money line Leon. I'm gonna be full transparent, but I want the, I want the to get cleaned out. So. No diddy. We. No, I don't think anybody would be mad at seeing uh, Bilal Muhammad finally face first face plant. Um, the and I just I. 29 decision wins between them. I fully understand betting a decision, betting it to go the distance. But, you know, like we said, I just, this one's, it's going to be weird. It's going to be some crazy. If it does go exactly according to the script, I I will, I will not be shocked. Um, but I will be, I will be pleasantly surprised if this one actually does make it to the cards. And if it does make it to the cards, good luck. Good fucking luck. Uh, uh, if we put Leon Edwards on there and cap it all off, we're at uh, plus fifty one thousand now. So uh, one dollar on all of our money line picks will net you five hundred smackaroos. So enjoy all that money, guys. Enjoy all that money, and make sure you uh, make sure you let them know who sent you. But we got another unanimous pick on this one for the main event. We got Leon Edwards at a minus two sixty. And that caps it for UFC 304. We got uh, still still going RoboCop for the dog of the week, fellas. That's where I'm yeah. at. All right. Dog of the week is officially Gregory Rodriguez. Let's get some votes in for lock of the week. Gage, who you got? I'm going to go Tom Aspel. It's a good one. Sean, rebuttal. I'm going to go Leon Edwards as lock of the week. I mean, if you, Edwards, go, if, if you don't want to do main cards, I, Sam Patterson on the early prelims. Fucking lock too. Patterson, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, it's a it's a pay-per-view, so if you guys want, if we can go whole card for the... Um, no, I, would, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would like that. Yeah. Same. So early, early prelims of Sam Patterson. Sure. Co-main and main event, things can happen weird. Look at both their last fights, so it's like... I would rather go Patterson where I feel way more comfortable making a lock of the week on. Yeah, true. And and given the circumstances, like we always say with those heavyweight fights and everything, the last last thing anybody would expect, we're all banking on a first round finish and we see Aspinall and Blades go a five round decision. So let's let's keep our fingers crossed on that one. Um, yep. but and prelims I have Molly McCann as lock for prelims. Or if you want to go Nathaniel Wood, too. There's quite but a few. I, I would go Molly as, like, damn sure a lot, personally. Molly. I think I'm still... I think I'm still in favor of Sam Patterson over Molly. No, Sam, Patterson, Sam Patterson's early prelims. Oh, you're talking about just prelim car. Okay, mm -hmm. I see. Um, yeah, 
Sam Patterson early prelims, Molly McCann prelims, Nathaniel. Mm, I don't know. Nathaniel would. Uh, some shit could happen. Some yeah, shit could happen. Molly McCann does feel like the. Waffle. Molly McCann does feel like the toss. The toss. Um, so let's go. Mm. So we got Aspinall Edwards on the main card for the locks. We got Molly McCann on the prelims, and we got Sam Patterson for the early prelims. And then the dog for the whole card, we're taking RoboCop Gregory Rodriguez, baby. Let's go. I like it. I like it. Some good stuff today, fellas. We did it. We capped that whole card, made it our friend, and uh, we're going to... We're going to clean up on this one again, folks. We're going to clean up on, on this one again. Be looking out for the uh, the odds to change, anything like that. We'll make sure we let you guys know on Instagram so you guys make sure you're following the official fight pit. Any news that we want to cover before we wrap it up? We, got, um, we were talking about Perth is coming up next. Not really getting a whole lot of uh, shine because it's, uh, it's being outdone by the sphere as of late. That's been... Taking up all the headlines. I mean, uh, Perth will be a good card. So. Yes, it is. Yeah. It is. Also, it's going to be. By the way, for the for the baseball fans, uh, Paul Skeens got his first career loss because he pitched eight eight and a quarter, eight and a third, gave up two runs. Eight and a third. <laughs> That's a loss. That's a loss. <laughs> and what do you say? Eight was it? Eight strikeouts. Jeez, bro. Jeez. He'll have uh, the end of the year at this point. It's uh, he's just flirting with it. Got to, got to. Yeah. I'm surprised that it had wasn't there was a wasn't there a no hitter in the last week? Uh, no. The last person that came close was him going seven innings, and they pulled him pulled. At 98 pitches or something. That's, I think yeah. that's what I'm thinking of. Before the All Star break, freaky. Uh, poor guy. Poor guy. Tough break, but hey, I oh, mean, yeah, poor guy. <laughs> hey, maybe John, best pitcher in baseball. It's going his guy. way. <laughs> Shits. Yeah, he's he's. Uh, don't don't feel too bad for him, but uh, you know it's bound to happen. It's bound At to twenty five, he's going to have the biggest bag in MLB history when it comes to pitchers. He'll be, he'll be a Yankee in two years. I mean, that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Or Dodger, the way, the way the Dodgers are going. Well, one of them. Or it could be an yeah. Astro, too, unfortunately, because they'll uh, have Ver- I, I, Ver- I don't want to put that juju in the world. Fuck you. I know. I agree yeah. with you. I agree. I wouldn't want to see that just because I I think I, definitely if he goes to the Astros, something bad happens. Something bad happens. They, they have that cosmic karma, like, uh, not not on their side and i i don't i think that that would be a death sentence if he ever skeens if you're listening don't go to houston bro don't go to houston they're also please. a dog shit team right now so yeah i mean hey in the last month so are the dodgers so i can't say the yankees. <laughs> oh. yankees I, orioles a lot of teams are slumping right now yeah the orioles just murdered my parlay because they lost to the fucking marlins but you know <laughs> Casual things. Oh yeah. god. Um, but we got so for the official um official picks on this one, we got Proc Neo, Patterson, Parkin, Elliot, McCann, Mokayev, Bannon, Lauren, Wood, Allen, Rodriguez, Green, Aspinall, and Edwards. And that is a plus fifty one thousand four hundred on that one. So enjoy all that. Scrilla scratch paper yaper on this one. Any final thoughts, boys? Any any regrets? Any take backs? Yeah, actually, we're uh, Tom Aspinall's tearing that other knee. It's going. Kyle, <laughs> Kyle, bro, we're sorry to break it to you. We're sorry to break <laughs> yeah, it to you. Your boy's losing his kneecap. It's all going. You got- <laughs> Curtis Blades is gonna have the most dominant fight of his career. Oh, poor guy, man. I'm gonna feel so bad if that actually happens now. But Kyle everybody, tune in next week to see how Kyle's doing. Tune in <laughs> next week. Um, we, do, we never know. Will Kyle be okay? Will Tom Aspinall be okay? Tune in next week <laughs> on the next episode of Dragon Ball Z.
But that's going to wrap it up for us, everybody. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure you are subscribed to the Fight Pit House Call on YouTube. Uh, follow the House Call Sports, the official Fight Pit, High Fight IQ, uh, Gage, Gage's two gauge uh two gauge b3 two gauge b3 almost had it almost had it and sean ryan sports this is the fight pit we in the house thank you guys for tuning in we will see you on the next one